begin. Ladies and gentlemen, to make his opening statement, why, uh, what are the major issues facing the next Illinois Attorney General, Joe Burkett? Good afternoon. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Jay. When I was 10 years old, I saw my mother punched in the face and hit with a bottle. I saw my brother John thrown through a plate glass window and my brother Danny beaten up. We were attacked by a gang. To this day, those images remain with me, as well as the images of the police and prosecutors who brought the man to justice who punched my mother in the face and hit her with a bottle. I wanted to be that man. This is the reason I became a prosecutor. I wanted to be the person who provides justice for people who have been wronged, people who have been hurt. I've been that person for the past 21 years, for more than two decades, protecting people and seeking justice in the courtroom. I've been the DuPage County State's Attorney since 1996, leading a team of dedicated men and women who protect the rights and freedoms of one million people every single day. You know, the duties of the State's Attorney and the Attorney General are virtu virtually identical. The duty to defend, to prosecute, the duty to consult and advise government, the duty to investigate abuses and bring people to justice, the duty to work with government to prepare contracts and provide other timely advice, the duty to protect people by working with investiga investigative grand juries across the state, protecting consumers, the taxpayers, and going after corrupt public officials. I've been doing that job and I do it effectively. Last year, the Illinois Chiefs of Police named me the Illinois Public Official of the Year. The Illinois Prosecutors named me the Illinois Prosecutor of the Year. Our family shelter in DuPage County, protecting women from domestic violence, named me their Criminal Justice Partner of the Year. And last year, the Illinois Narcotics Officers Association and the Chiefs of Police praised my work for going after gangs and guns and drugs with innovative strategies. I'm known as a tough crime fighter, but I'm actually much more than that. I lead the second largest civil office in the state of Illinois, protecting consumers, the taxpayers, going after polluters, improving our child support collection system in this state, and ensuring that the people of our state, the people in my county, have effective trial and appellate advocacy. I've worked with community leaders and task forces to find creative solutions to address the emerging problems in our society. That's the work of the Attorney General. I do all of this because I care about people. I want to take that obligation that I feel very strongly to the next level to become the Illinois Attorney General. In court, I'm a tough prosecutor. Away from court, I'm a family man. My wife, Patty, my high school sweetheart, we've been married now for 25 years. Patty's here with me today. I promise you this, you have a choice in this race between two very different candidates, an ambitious freshman legislator and an experienced prosecutor and proven leader. I am a prosecutor, I'm an effective administrator, and I will lead this state in a new direction. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Paul, thank you very much. Jay, thank you as well. And let me thank the City Club for sponsoring this debate today, particularly for giving Joe and I the opportunity to make our cases for being your Attorney General. This is an opportunity for the voters of the state of Illinois to hear where each of us stands on issues that will affect them the most. The responsibilities of the Attorney General are very broad. And in many cases, the office has failed to deliver. The Attorney General has a unique role in the administration of the state. The Attorney General is a fighter on behalf of the public interest. As a lawyer, I have represented clients in state and federal court on a broad spectrum of issues, from securities fraud to employment discrimination. I have argued for my clients in court and in front of administrative agencies, such as the Federal EEOC and the Illinois Department of Human Rights. And I have counseled clients, both individuals and businesses, working with them to assert their rights under the law. As a state senator, the work that I do every day impacts not just the 200,000 constituents I have, but all of the 12 and a half million people of the state of Illinois. 
Every day as a senator, I receive calls and visits to my office from constituents that are hoping to solve a problem. And their problems are as diverse as the problems that are faced by the Attorney General. They need help with consumer complaints. They need help dealing with the unfair denial of health care claims. And they need help obtaining benefits that the state owes them. The next Attorney General needs to take the lead in protecting the people of Illinois on an equally broad range of issues. As I travel across the state, as I have been doing for what seems to be three years, I hear what people want from their chief legal officer. They want somebody to protect their communities from violence. They want somebody to protect consumers from fraud. They want somebody to protect ordinary investors and workers from corporate corruption. I believe that the Illinois Attorney General has a dynamic role to play on these issues and many others. Joe Burkett is going to ask you to judge his candidacy on the basis of his career as a prosecutor. I then ask you to ask Rolando Cruz, who was tried three times for a crime he never committed about Joe Burkett. I ask you to ask Stephen Schmidt, the witness who says Joe Burkett coerced him to lie so he wouldn't have to admit a mistake. Joe Burkett is asking you to judge his integrity and his leadership on the basis of his past record. It's the record of a prosecutor who has been unencumbered by conscience. Okay, now as is the, uh, is the custom, uh, we have the microphone there. City club members only. Mr. Mazur, line them up. The first question will be given to Ms. Madigan. We'll have 90 seconds to respond, the second and so forth, up and back. Uh, we asked you, got a little confused. Uh, the uh, first question, just state your name, sir, and where you're from for Ms. Madigan. Mark Carlin, Mark Carlin Associates, and uh, member of the Executive Committee of the Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence. Senator Madigan, you, your opponent was only one of only two people for statewide office endorsed by the Illinois State Rifle Association. In a September 13th Chicago Tribune article, Jim Ryan was not endorsed, and his staff said they were not, he was not endorsed because he would not end endorse a carry concealed law or a law that would preempt state municipalities and police officers from enacting their own handgun laws. They did not endorse you, State Senator Madigan. May I ask you why you think your opponent was one of only two statewide candidates endorsed by the State Rifle Association and why you were not? Well, the issue that you bring up is a very important one, and it's the issue of how are we going to make sure that criminals do not have their hands on guns here in the state of Illinois so that our communities are safe. Um, and there's a real difference uh, between my opponent and I on this issue, or else he obviously wouldn't have gotten the endorsement of the State Rifle Association. Uh, as many of you know, I have been a proponent of legislation uh, that makes sure that we will protect the citizens of the state of Illinois from gun violence. Um, I sponsored a bill my very first year to protect police officers that were out on the streets uh, so that hidden compartments could not be allowed in cars so that criminals wouldn't have access to guns that could endanger the policemen's and women's lives. Um, it is unclear to me where my opponent stands on this issue. He has said previously that he does not support concealed carry, uh, but obviously one does not receive the endorsement of the State Rifle Association without being supportive of concealed carry. And in fact, there is an organization called Concealed Carry Inc., which is a gun rights organization that issued the following statement. At 12.10 p.m. on August 7, 2001, Concealed Carry Inc. was contacted by DuPage County State's Attorney Joe Burkett. Mr. Burkett stated as follows, he supports concealed carry. I presume that's why he was endorsed and I was not. Mr. Burkett, you have 60 seconds to respond. Okay. Well, once again, um, my opponent has taken a page out of her father's playbook and is running a distorted and negative campaign. Not only am I not a supporter of concealed carry, Lisa, last year we hosted a press conference with Dick Devine stating publicly that I was not a proponent of concealed carry, and I warned people against using a, create a loophole in the law 
to act in that manner. Unlike you, Lisa, I have prosecuted gun violators. I'm a member of Operation Surefire. I was one of the first prosecutors in the state to join that. I've prosecuted gun violators. I have ensured that police officers across our county and across the state are trained on gun tracing. I have put armed criminals in prison for their lifetime. I am a gun prosecutor. I'm supported because I'm fair and I'm honest. And I am not a proponent of concealed carry. I've said that repeatedly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Question now for. <laughs> this question is for Mr. Burkett. Thank you. My name is Jill Swick, and I have a question for Jill Burkett. Um, Joe, I've gotten, um, as I've tried to stay abreast of the issues, I've gotten a kind of a confused message on what your position is on plans to modernize O'Hare Airport. Um, I've heard you support it, and then I see two lawsuits filed against the city of Chicago, so I'm hoping that you'll clarify for us what your position is. Again, the, I did not join the second lawsuit that was to stop the purchasing by the city of Chicago in Bensonville, for example. I joined the lawsuit that was filed by my predecessor to ensure open government, to ensure that current law was complied with. And from a personal standpoint, I have never expressed an opposition to expansion or modernization of O'Hare, or for that matter, a third airport. Those are public policy questions. But as the Attorney General, as I've done as State's Attorney, I will make sure that government is open and honest, and that we don't have O'Hare expansion based on backroom, cigar-filled room deals. That's wrong. It was our litigation that opened the debate. Chicago was forced to disclose their plans for new runways. That's an issue that should be debated publicly, and I continue to support an open and public deba debate. We won a major victory in the Illinois Supreme Court, ensuring that when there's litigation over a plan for an infrastructure improvement, when there's litigation, there is no such thing as a deliberative process privilege. You must disclose the plans so the people understand what those plans are, and everybody who has an interest, everybody who is impacted can then weigh in on the plan. That's what this litigation is about. You know, I've got friends and relatives here in this room who are our union members who would benefit by expansion because that means jobs. So from a personal standpoint, I've never expressed a, an opposition to expansion. But from a legal standpoint, open and honest government's the key. Thank you. Mr. Ms. Madigan, you have 60 seconds to respond. Thank you. O'Hare expansion is absolutely vital for the economic viability of the Chicagoland region and the state of Illinois. Uh, it's very clear that we will lose the opportunity for thousands of jobs and billions of dollars of investment without an expansion of O'Hare. I have been a proponent of the plan agreed to by the mayor and by the governor. Um, and Jill, I share with you confusion over where Joe Burkett stands on the issue of O'Hare expansion. Um, while he I just stated that he is personally in favor of it, um, I think it really begs the question, how can you be personally in favor of the expansion of O'Hare and be paying the chief opponent of O'Hare expansion, Joe Karaganis, over a million dollars to fight the expansion and to hold it up? In addition, um, in a 2002 candid position put out by the Suburban O'Hare Commission, it says, candidates for Attorney General, Joseph Burkett, I am against expansion in all. Um, he doesn't be a candidate as the state's attorney. This is a personal position. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Question for Ms. Madigan. Good afternoon, Michael Bauer. Uh, if elected, will you lobby members of the le legislature from your party to support passage of HB 101, which is the bill that would amend the Illinois Human Rights Act to prohibit discrimination in employment, housing, and public accommodations due to one's sexual orientation? Michael, I think this is a very good question, um, and it's one that many people in this room know my position on. In fact, I have lobbied members of my party uh, in the Senate, and even members who are members of the Senate who are not in my party uh, to support House Bill 101. House Bill 101 is the amendment to the Illinois Human Rights Act that would allow protection for people on the basis of sexual orientation. 
to make sure that they could not be discriminated against in terms of employment, making sure they could not be discriminated against uh, was where they wanted to live, public accommodations. Um, I feel that all the citizens of the state of Illinois deserve to be protected under the law. Uh, and I will continue as Attorney General to work on behalf of passage of this bill, hoping that one day here in Illinois, everybody will be able to enjoy their life uh, and not have to fear that they may lose their job, uh, may lose the place that they're living simply because of their sexual orientation. Thank you. Well, first of all, if House Bill 101 becomes law, as Attorney General, I will effectively and aggressively enforce the law, as I've done with other laws where I have a personal opposition to the law, but I have a legal obligation to the people that I serve. As State's Attorney, I have protected the rights of gay victims in crime, uh, protected them in the courtroom, protected them at the advocacy table. I will do that as Illinois Attorney General, should that bill become law, just as I have protected uh, abortion, uh, people who have a right to an abortion, the woman's right to choose. Despite my personal views on abortion, I have prosecuted scores of people who have attempted to interfere with a woman's right to choose. Although I'm pro-life, uh, I favor an exception for life of the mother, rape and incest. I will treat that issue in the same fashion, aggressively protect people. My Civil Rights Bureau under my administration will be aggressive and protect the rights of every individual. There is a concern over uh, litigation because sexual orientation is not immu an immutable characteristic. That is a legitimate concern. Thank you. So the question was, will you lobby members of the, your party to support passage of the bill? I don't think you responded to the question. Uh, that's, the, you, okay. don't, you only get one All shot. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, a, a, a question from Mr. Burkett. Step right up, Joe. Hi, Joel Cohen. Um, Joe, I'm glad you clarified that situation about your brother John, because I've been worried and concerned about him for years, but I didn't know about that one incident. I think, you know, in your presentation, you really defined the difference between yourself and Joe, you ask a question. Anna Lisa. You ask a question. The question is, as Attorney General, which I think is very different than um, being a state's attorney, you have to deal with the legislature, you have to deal with a lot of other issues besides law enforcement. Certainly as a chief law enforcement officer in DuPage County, you're known to be you know, very Joe, excellent you gotta ask a and question. reputable. You're taking so other my people's time. question is, uh, could you clarify that somewhat more? Well, thank you, Joel. The, the, uh, the issue, the, the question. Don't repeat the question. It's hard to say. The debate will be over. <laughs> it's hard to say what the question well, was. Let me, let me just say this. <laughs> the, duties of, the duties and responsibilities of the state's attorney are virtually identical, just on a different level. The attorney general must be basically four things. An effective advocate, somebody who knows how to try cases in court and lead prosecutors, the most important prosecutor's office in the state. Effective advocacy skills at both the trial and the appellate level. The second role, being an effective administrator, running a large office. I run a large office now, 190 men and women who protect the rights and freedoms of people every single day. The third role is to be an effective advisor, providing independent, candid, and well-researched advice to government officials. I do that job now on a county level, and I've also sat on a number of task forces statewide providing advice to government leaders, including the governors, the former governors. And finally, an effective policymaker, someone who brings fresh ideas to Springfield, works for passage, and also sits on task forces in our own communities, which I do now on child support, gang violence, drug crime, domestic violence, <laughs> white collar crime. Those are the roles of the Attorney General. The only difference is, obviously, it's on an expanded role. My, my county is larger than eight states, so it's a great uh, experience in terms of having a training ground to do the job. It's an awesome responsibility. I'm ready for the job. Thank you. Ms. Madigan. I think your question was, what are, what are your qualifications to be Attorney General? Is that it? Well, the, oh, there we go. Uh, I believe that the Attorney General has to be both a lawyer and an advocate. And that means working both in court and out of court to protect people here in the state of Illinois. So it means being able to use the resources of that office in a way that you are going after and protecting our environment. 
You are making sure to go after consumer fraud. You're working to provide senior citizens with better prescription drug programs. In order to do that, you have to have had legislative experience because you're going to have to work with the legislature, not just in terms of substantive legislation, but also in terms of resource allocation. By sitting on the Appropriations Committee for the last four years, I have that. In addition, the Attorney General has to represent all the state agencies and state departments. Because I sit on the Senate Appropriations Committee where there's only one, I've taken testimony and heard testimony from all of them. Thank you. Thank you. This question is from Ms. Madigan. Uh, Stella Black. Uh, Lisa, on one of your TV commercials, you have indicated that one of your prime um, battles, I should say, would be for identity theft. And I was wondering if you could maybe give a brief thing and and kind of concentrate on if it would be a preventive or after the fact, because I've heard such horror stories about people have taken years and years to get their credit cleaned up and get their, their identity back. This is a very important issue for everybody in the room, everybody in the country. Identity theft is the fastest growing white collar crime in the country. And there is much more that needs to be done from a statewide perspective to protect people from identity theft. As the Attorney General, I have said that we would put in place a Bureau of Privacy Protection. And that Bureau of Privacy Protection would be working on different fronts. One, we would be doing the public awareness to make sure that people understood the importance of protecting their personal information and how that personal information is out there on the internet and how you need to make sure to not let that happen. Two, we would be working with the business community, as I am as a legislator right now, to make sure that we're putting in place best practices and we are making sure that we've got privacy policies in place. In addition, we would be working with the legislature to pass better laws to make sure that we are not allowing people who use credit cards to actually use all four digits, at the, anything more than the last four digits at the end. Uh, in addition, we will use specialists, people who are computer forensics, to make sure that they can track these people and then we can do the prosecutions. So it will be a complete plan uh, that I have in place to protect the citizens of the state of Illinois from identity theft. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Burkett, you have 60 seconds to respond. Thank you. Well, identity theft is an issue that I'm very familiar with. I pros have prosecuted scores of those cases. I chair an identity theft task force now. We have a very aggressive plan. One of the issues that we have to address is our venue provision. How do we get jurisdiction on people who steal identities of citizens in Illinois but who are committing their offenses gathering property in other states? I am in favor of extending jurisdiction to other states when the victim resides in the state of Illinois. I think it's constitutional. We've got to work with our colleagues across the state and the federal government. The other thing is to have civil liability written into the law upon a finding of guilt in the criminal courtroom, there should be a civil liability penalty imposed on anybody who commits the offense of identity theft for the cost of damages and also the cost of repairing your credit together with attorney's fees. That legislation is ready to go and I hope Lisa will help get it passed in the fall veto session. Thank, Thank you. you. Question, for, question for Mr. Burkett. My name is Kate O'Malley. My question relates to the cost of prescription drugs. It seems that so many seniors are struggling to make ends meet and the, the cost of drugs is, is just uh, higher and higher all the time. What are your plans for uh, helping seniors cover these costs? Well, thank you. It's a very good question. One of the issues in this race is how are we going to respond to the concerns of senior citizens, persons with disabilities, people who cannot pay for effective medical care. We want to work with uh, the community, the hospital, the drug community, to make sure that we keep the cost of hospital care and drugs low. I will use the Consumer Fraud Act and the Deceptive Business Practices Act effectively, together with the Antitrust Act. Jim Ryan, our current Attorney General, and I know my opponent's been critical, he's led the fight. He has filed more actions than any other Attorney General in the nation regarding that very issue. I'll continue that tradition. We will do all that we can to protect the consumers using all of the tools available. In addition to that, working with the uh, hospital care providers, making sure that they keep the cost of medical services low and also the cost of prescription drugs. When the market is manipulated to increase prices, 
by de either through deception or for uh, uh, collusion, I will work effectively to bring those pharmaceutical companies to the table, to court if we have to, to make sure that they follow the law. You know, there are a broad range of statutes. And when I look at a problem, I look at the tools that are available to me. Three of those tools are the Consumer Fraud Act, the Deceptive Business Practices Act, and the Antitrust Act. We'll use those tools effectively, plus the power of the Attorney General to collect and gather information short of litigation to make sure that we know uh, what's going on out there in the marketplace. Thank you. Ms. Madigan. This is an extraordinarily important issue for not just seniors, but for families throughout the state of Illinois, throughout the country, really. Um, I have a very comprehensive program and proposal uh, that I have put out in terms of how we are going to protect, in particular, our senior citizens from the skyrocketing cost of prescription drugs. Uh, number one, we are going to go after drug companies that engage in illegal practices to keep their prices high or that are actually preventing generics from coming onto the market. Uh, number two, the Arizona Attorney General did something very innovative. She did a survey throughout the state to determine what the drug prices were, found they differed, published that information so as consumers, people in the state of Arizona can make a determination where best to purchase their drugs from. We want to do the same thing here in Illinois. Third, we still have to work with the legislature because the federal government is not moving ahead quickly to make sure that we put in place a prescription drug program for our seniors. Thank, Thank you. you. A uh, question for Ms. Madigan. Senator Madigan, my oh, name is... Oh, 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 I'm sorry. State your name, sir. My name is Tim Leahy. I'm Secretary Treasurer of the Chicago Federation of Labor, AFL-CIO. Um, working families, workers depend on a strong attorney general who will defend and protect workers' rights, not only in Chicago and Cook County, but throughout the state. Um, of grave concern, especially to our brothers and sisters in the building and construction trades, are the prevailing wage. Has Attorney General, um, what is your plan to defend and protect the prevailing wage laws in the state of Illinois? This is a very important issue as you bring up for working families because we have not seen leadership out of the Attorney General's office for the past eight years on enforcing the prevailing wage act. And as you know, oftentimes the procedure gets slowed down because the administrative process at the Illinois Department of Labor. Uh, when I am the Attorney General, I am going to make sure that we have a team of attorneys who are trained in the Prevailing Wage Act, the same way we did when Neil Hartigan was the Attorney General, to make sure that when these claims come up, we deal with them on an expedited basis, to make sure that the men and women of our state are earning a fair wage. But in addition to that, I want to make sure that we put in place a labor advisory council so that not just issues of prevailing wage, but broader issues that impact the working men and women of our state are going to be addressed on a timely manner. And that may be through administrative processes, it may be through litigation, it may be through working with the legislature to change the laws. So there is a wide array of issues that need to be contended with on this front, not just prevailing wage, so that we can protect the families in the state of Illinois and make sure that they have the representation and the advocacy that they need and haven't seen out of the Attorney General's office for the past eight years. Mr. Mr. You Burkett, know, 60 seconds. I, I don't want to be put in the position of defending Jim Ryan, but he issued opinions saying that the state of Illinois must comply with the Prevailing Wage Act. Um, my opponent during the course of this campaign has put out letters on her letterhead saying that Joe Burkett refuses to enforce the Prevailing Wage Act, which is not the case at all. I've been enforcing the Prevailing Wage Act in my county throughout my career as state's attorney. I was a union member. I was a Teamster. Three of my brothers are union members. More than 30 of my cousins are union members. I want my own family to receive a fair wage. I've stood up for the rights of working men and women in our county. I've enforced the picketing laws to make sure that people who are on strike legitimately protesting have a right to picket without, with freedom of movement so they can't be taken into custody. I support the working men and women of Illinois. It's another page out of my opponent's father's playbook run a negative campaign. I support the working, working men and women of Illinois.
The more you applaud, the less questions we get to. Yeah, yes. My name is Joyce Washington. Joyce, this is to Mr. Burkett. We heard what you said on the issue of choice, but would you be clear and specific about how you, the two of you differ on that issue? Thank you, Joyce. You know, my opponent obviously has tried to use this as a, a, an issue in this race. As state's attorney, I've enforced the woman's right to choose, as I mentioned, by pro prosecuting scores of abortion protesters who've crossed the line between the legitimate expression of their beliefs and interfering with a woman's right to choose. I'll do that as attorney general. I believe in an exception for the life of the mother. I'm not opposed to an exception for rape and incest. That's my personal view. But I would never let my personal view interfere with the way I enforce the law or defend the constitutionality of our existing laws. It won't happen. It hasn't happened. I have a record. You know, one of the things we've been talking about throughout this campaign is a record. I have a record of solid leadership on that issue. That will continue as the next Illinois Attorney General. While we're talking about that, my opponent talked about her record, what she's done. She's never prosecuted a case. She's never looked into the eyes of a woman who's been denied access to an abortion clinic and then gone in and advocated for her. I've done that job, both as a trial prosecutor and as the state's attorney, because my duty, my sworn duty, is to uphold the Constitution and the statutes of the state of Illinois. I understand duty. I'm not a person who's talking about rhetoric, but a proven record of leadership on that issue. And I think women of Illinois deserve better. If th that should not be an issue in this race, but as long as people are raising it, you should know what the actual record is. As a prosecutor, I support a woman's right to choose. Thank you. Ms. Madigan, Six, 60 seconds. In the State Senate, I have been one of the leading advocates for protecting a woman's health, for protecting her reproductive rights, and for protecting her right to choose. Uh, every single year in the State Senate, in the State House, anti-choice legislation is introduced, and it is usually unconstitutional anti-choice legislation. Um, I am proud for standing up and voting against those measures. As Attorney General, I want to make sure that we are not wasting millions of taxpayer dollars defending unconstitutional litigation or unconstitutional legislation. Um, I am proud of my record and that it has earned me the support of Planned Parenthood Illinois. Um, one of the positions that my opponent has taken is that he believes that we need to legislatively study the alleged link between an abortion and the later onset of breast cancer, even though the scientific community has ruled that there is no link at all. Thank you. My name is Frank Biga. This um, is to Ms. Madigan. Yes. Um, Ms. Madigan, many attorneys general throughout the country have sued Microsoft for abusing monopolistic practices, and others have sued tobacco companies for producing defective products. You mentioned earlier that you were very concerned about your citizens, and some of those would be in the city. If you agree with the, lo first of all, do you agree with the logic of those suits by those other attorneys generals against Microsoft and against the tobacco companies? And if you do agree with that logic, would you then sue the one monopoly in this city that produces defective products, mainly the Chicago public schooling system? I think your question is, what are we going to do as attorney general uh, for education and for the students in the state of Illinois. As you know, as I hope you know, I sit as the ranking Democrat on the Senate Education Committee. As well, I am on the Governor's Education uh, Finance Advisory Committee. Uh, there is work that we have been doing extensively to make sure that resources are getting into schools to make sure, in particular, our low-income students are going to be educated and be able to attain the skills they need to be productive citizens, but also to get jobs. Um, this is an absolute priority. And as the Attorney General, while it may not seem as if there is a role to play, there is an enormous role to play in terms of being an advocate. Because it is absolutely imperative, not just to make sure that our children, once they grow up, will get jobs, but we have to make sure that they don't become part of our criminal justice system. It's the prevention work that I did 
when I was working in the Austin community, after school, on the weekends, bringing children in to the roll call room of a police station so that we could work to better improve their math skills and their reading skills. We would also then prevent them from being out on the corners and being prey to the gangs. I wanted to make sure, and as Attorney General, I will continue to advocate to make sure that our children stay involved and engaged in their education and not become part of our criminal justice system. And that will require a great deal of advocacy. Um, Mr. Burkett, you have 60 seconds. Thank you. With respect to that issue, the first part of the question was on class action lawsuits or attorney general initiated lawsuits. Um, when I look at an issue, and I've got 21 years of litigation experience, my opponent has never prosecuted a case. She's never tried a case on her own. These are complex matters that you have to look at and make decisions that are in the best public interest. I don't believe in bandwagon litigation. I don't stick my finger in the air and decide which way the political winds are blowing and then jump on to an action. I will look at all actions and decide what's in the best interest of the people I represent, the consumers and the taxpayers of this state. Let me say this. The Attorney General's Office has responsibility for the enforcement of 173 separate acts in the Illinois compiled statutes. That is an immense responsibility. The Illinois Attorney General must be familiar with how to litigate cases and how to make decisions in the best public interest. With respect to schools, there's contract enforcement opportunities there for the Attorney General. When anybody is getting state grants, the Attorney General can step in and make sure it's being spent wisely. Thank you. I will. Thank you. A, uh, a question for Mr. Burkett. Hello, my name is Alicia Obando, and I'm here on behalf of Chicago Now. And I'd like to hear from both of you what your plans are to combat domestic violence. Thank you, Alicia. As state's attorney, I have been a leader on protecting women against domestic violence, protecting all persons from domestic violence, <laughs> initiating legislation in Springfield over the, over the years, many, many years. I helped draft the anti-stalking legislation. I helped draft the first ever countywide protocol and the statewide protocol for addressing domestic violence. I chaired the Domestic Violence Advisory Council in our county, leading to innovation and reform throughout the state. As Attorney General, I will make sure that the millions of dollars in grant, fund, grant funds that the Illinois Attorney General supervises through the uh, Violence Prevention Act and other acts are spent wisely on programs that have promise. In our county, people who go through the treatment program, through the domestic violence courtroom in our county, we have the lowest recidivism rate in the nation, 3% recidivism for first people who have been discharged after one year. Now, the success would be zero domestic violence, but we've had tremendous reforms. As Attorney General, I'll provide effective training across this state to ensure that police officers and prosecutors are adhering to their responsibilities under the statewide protocol to provide effective training for victim advocates, to work with family shelter services in our county and the family shelter services across the state of Illinois to make sure that they are implementing the best programs, the best possible hope to reduce the cycle of violence in this state. And obviously, throughout the, the course of my career, providing effective advocacy for victims of domestic violence in the courtroom. That's what I've done as state's attorney. That's what I'll do as attorney general. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Manigan, 60 seconds. <coughs> there are over 300,000 women a year who are victims of domestic violence in Illinois. There are over 10,000 women this year that we estimate we will turn away from shelters because we do not have the resources to provide them with a safe haven. Uh, this has been a priority issue during my campaign and during my tenure in the State Senate. I have been throughout the state of Illinois conducting forums, roundtables, where we bring together survivors, we bring together their family members, we bring together state's attorneys, we're bringing together judges and people who provide shelter services to find out what it is we need to do. We need to provide more resources and need to work with the legislature and others to do that. We also need to make sure that we pass stronger legislation so that we can prosecute these abusers and that we can make sure that women and children are going to be safe in our communities. Uh, this is an enormously horrible issue for women and for their families, and I promise that as Attorney General, it's going to be a top priority of mine. Thank you. A question from Ms. Madigan. Hi, my name is Ann Michelle McMahon, and 
I believe the courtroom experience is essential to the role of attorney general. We're going to have just, a question, aren't we? Yes. Okay. You just mentioned the importance of prosecuting, but you've never prosecuted a case. I'd like you to name me the cases that you have prosecuted. Have you prosecuted okay, a case? One question at a time. In fact, one question only. Very good question. Okay. Ms. Madigan, you have 90 seconds. Thank you very much. I think as I said at the beginning, uh, the Office of Attorney General is one that requires somebody who is both a lawyer and an advocate because you will be working both in a courtroom and out of the courtroom to protect the citizens of the state of Illinois. Uh, as I mentioned in my opening statement, I have represented clients in federal court. I have represented clients in state court. Because of the work and the breadth of the work I've done, and a lot of it is employment discrimination work, I have represented clients in front of numerous agencies, the Federal EEOC, the Illinois Department of Human Rights, the Illinois Department of Labor, the Illinois Department of Employment Security. Here in Cook County and in Chicago, we also have separate administrative agencies that deal with the employment laws. But in addition to my experiences as a lawyer, I have worked as an advocate for people. I have worked as an administrator at a community college. I have worked with the Chicago Police Department pioneering community policing strategies. Part of the Attorney General's role is to make sure that we are putting in place programs, that we are able to work with the legislature. And obviously my experience as a state senator allows me both to have passed legislation as well as to have the breadth of knowledge necessary about the state agencies that I will be representing. And so all of this experience comes together to allow me to attack well the job of Attorney General. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, Obviously, there's a huge difference in disparity in experience. I've been trying cases for 21 years. I've tried every kind of case. I've gone into the courtroom and advocated, looked into the eyes of women who've been beaten, who've been raped, who've been stabbed, who've been strangled, and then walked into the courtroom and protected them by ensuring that justice was done for 21 years. My opponent, you just heard the answer, she's never tried a case, she's never prosecuted a case. The disparity in experience is obviously an issue in this race. I bring a perspective to this race as a victim of crime. I became a prosecutor because of what happened to my family as a boy and what happened to my family growing up poor and being on the other end of the criminal justice system as a victim. I will always advocate for victims. They are first and foremost in my mind and in my heart in the way I approach my job. And as long as my opponent used the term attack, that's what she's been doing, attacking my record because she has no record at all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Jeff, get it out of the way. <laughs> this is for Mr. Burkett. Where's Fox? Jeff Berkowitz, host and producer of Public Affairs, airing every Monday night at 8.30. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now a short question, Now where's Fox? Yes. Fair, balanced, and tough. Okay. <laughs> State's Attorney Burkett. Your opponent has raised the issue in her opening today of Rolando Cruz. Let me ask you a question about that in a somewhat different context. If you still believe that Rolando Cruz, although not involved apparently based on DNA in the actual rape of Janine DeCarico, but you believe that somehow he was involved in that, in that criminal act, don't you have an obligation to oppose forthrightly his application for clemency. Or if on the other hand, you believe he's not involved in that in any way, not just the rape, but not conspiracy otherwise, don't you have an obligation as a candidate and as a state's attorney to, to, to in fact favor or recommend that he be given clemency? Well, Mr. Burkett, you have you 90 Jeff. seconds. Jeff, that's a good question and uh, thank you for, for asking it. In terms of my role, my opponent has tried to distort my role in that case. The, the role that I played is well documented, but somebody who wrote a book about it and has been following the case, Tom Frisbee, a vocal critic of the prosecution, said this um, just, just this past weekend. Lisa Madigan tried to portray Burkett as a major player in the Cruz case, but there's just not enough evidence to back it up because there, there is no evidence of it. I advocated for the DNA testing that, that occurred and also advised the trial team, my bosses, by the way, tried all the cases. I didn't, I was not a supervisor, but I did handle some discovery matters. 
um, advised them to turn over the recanted testimony of Jim Montesano. Those two elements led to Rolando Cruz's freedom. With regard to the personal opinions that I have, they're not relevant. With regard to the clemency petition, I think it's important. I think it's important that the governor know all the facts. We will give the governor and the Prisoner Review Board uh, access to any information they need, including the transcripts of testimony of Rolando Cruz, wherein he admitted that he repeatedly lied to a grand jury investigating the rape and murder of a child, that he's a multiple perjurer, that he's also a convicted felon. Those are relevant, as, and the governor can decide for himself issues regarding what should or should not happen with respect to Rolando Cruz. I settled the civil cases. I did my job and protected the taxpayers of our county and the 19 people who were sued in federal uh, court, a civil rights case. That's my job. I've done my job. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Madigan, you have, 60, you have 60 seconds to respond. Right. The allegation or the comment that Joe Burkett ordered the DNA testing for Rolando Cruz is untrue. Rolando Cruz was at a point in his trial where he had a right to the DNA testing. In addition, it remains unclear how much responsibility Joe Burkett is willing to take in terms of his role. He was the lead prosecutor on the third trial for a period of less than a year, but sub for a substantial amount of time. In addition, he did go to the home of Stephen Schmidt. Stephen Schmidt is a jailhouse acquaintance of Rolando Cruz, and Stephen Schmidt says that he was coerced into giving false testimony to support their theory of the case for the third trial. Uh, I think there are still numerous questions that need to be answered. And I think it really speaks to the character and the integrity of Joe Burkett, Jim Ryan, as to what their involvement was and what they believe in terms of fairness and justice for the people of the state of Illinois. Uh, this will be the last question. And since this is an odd, each candidate will have 90 seconds to respond. That will only be fair. Sergeant of Arms Mazer suggests that you turn, no, <laughs> Sergeant of Arms Mazer orders that all of you turn off your cell phones, <laughs> not suggestion. Okay, 90 seconds, starting with Ms. Madigan, each will have 90 seconds to respond. Your question, please. Hi, Connie Mixon, City Colleges of Chicago. Americans Wait have a become- And a teacher of the year, right? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Americans have become more and more cynical and disengaged from the political process and their elected officials. We see this translated in voter turnout. I'm wondering what you're each doing to reach out to voters, especially young people and minorities that tend to have the lowest voter turnout. 90 seconds, Ms. Manning. Thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, we have been doing a tremendous amount, I do a tremendous amount of work as a state senator in particular, going and visiting my schools. Uh, in fact, one of the very first bills I passed allowed 17-year-olds to be voter registers uh, and to work as election judges because we wanted to make sure they were engaged in an early point in the process. But the bigger question you're asking is, what are we going to do to restore the faith and integrity of people in state government? I have proposed a comprehensive public corruption plan to make sure that we have a fully staffed office of public integrity within the AG's office. I also want to make sure that we have an independent state ethics commission, a bipartisan, hopefully nonpartisan entity that will be able to investigate public corruption, that will also be able to train our state employees and our elected officials in the ethics laws, in the Whistleblower Protection Act, in the Freedom of Information Act, in the Open Meetings Act. Because as I travel across the state of Illinois, People are talking about this issue. The reason there is so much momentum for change in the state of Illinois is that people truly want to see a day where we don't have to deal with the license for bribe scandal, where we don't have to see the federal government coming in to do the work that we should be doing here in the state of Illinois. The Attorney General has a role to play as a watchdog, and it's something that I am committed to doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Burkett, you have 90 seconds. Well, obviously, I'm excited about the race. The, uh, the, the question is getting the message out. I've been in every community across the state, the community where I grew up in Austin, the Austin neighborhood here in the city. We're working hard across the state. We're not going to leave any stone unturned. A big part of the 
job of being a candidate is getting your message out. Experience, proven leadership versus someone who's a freshman legislator um, who's really got no trial experience and obviously is running for political reasons as well as whatever her public interest is. But we have to raise a tremendous amount of money. I'm doing that, reaching out to people across the state um, and also setting the record straight, like the record on Cruz. You know, once again today, my opponent uses this opportunity to attack my record. Yesterday, we gave documents to the Chicago Tribune editorial when she repeated these accusations that have all been debunked. Tom Frisbee said it well. It's just not going to stick because the facts refute those claims. This whole issue regarding a witness, I've interviewed thousands of witnesses and I've never compromised my integrity in my lifetime. I won't do it. I never would. I've got a record of distinguished service that goes back 21 years. And you know what? The price of having a record, the price of leadership is having a record that an opponent with no record can attack. That's what this campaign's been about. You know, we're going to raise the funds to get our message out. Being on the air is very important. My opponent has the muscle and influence of her father behind her. You know, God bless her. Uh, I've got support from people who want to elect me Attorney General because they believe in my leadership. Thank you. Very good. We now, we now come to the closing statements. And I believe, Mr. Burkett, you close first. We agree on one thing. The Attorney General is the Chief Legal Officer and the Chief Law Enforcement Officer for the State of Illinois. But when you go in the voting booth, you want to hire the best lawyer for this job, not the best politician. It is the most important prosecutor's office in this state. Make no mistake about it. The race is about hiring the most qualified lawyer for this office. The lawyer who has the training, skills, knowledge, and preparation to do the job. That's what you do when you hire a private lawyer. In fact, that's what the rules of professional conduct require. A lawyer who has the independence and integrity to lead this state in a new direction to go after corrupt public officials. I have a record for doing that. I'm the person that has that experience and the proven leadership to get the job done. The lawyer who must protect the people and fight for justice, not a politician. Two decades I've been putting thousands of criminals behind bars, more than 7,000 felons in just the last six years, and corrupt public officials, regardless of their political affiliation. I have the experience and a proven record to get the job done for the people of Illinois. You know I am equipped to meet today's challenges, and there are many, many challenges that the Attorney General faces. I have a vision for the office that's based upon leadership, experience, working with families, looking to the eyes of victim, victims, and then going to court and advocating on their behalf. Experience, not rhetoric, is the basis of my plans and vision for the office. Protecting consumers. My opponent can twist facts, but she can't make up a resume in five months. People of this state deserve and expect independence and integrity in the Office of Attorney General. I will bring that independence and respect. My opponent is an ambitious legislator, but it takes more than ambition. As Thomas Jefferson said, making laws is important, but enforcing laws is more important. That's what I do. I enforce the law. Thank you very much. The differences between Joe Burkett and myself couldn't be greater, could they? Uh, in today's debate, we really have talked about some of the differences we have on fundamental issues. Issues such as a woman's right to choose, issues such as protecting civil rights and human rights of people. As Joe just mentioned, he believes that the Attorney General should focus only on prosecuting the wrongdoer. I believe the Attorney General should do much, much more. More to protect the environment. More to protect consumers. More to protect ordinary investors and working men and women of our state. He believes that leadership means covering up your mistakes. Refusing to admit that you were ever wrong. He has demonstrated that the law works only for a privileged few. 
If I become Attorney General, I can assure you that I will speak for all the people of the state of Illinois. There will be no special deals with judges. There will be no special deals with defense lawyers. As Attorney General, I will be your advocate to clean up the environment, protect citizen rights, and prosecute the guilty, both in the streets and in the corporate suites. The voters of Illinois have a very important choice to make. They can vote to give everybody a fair shake, or they can settle for the past history of a denial of basic rights. Joe Burkett has this history. The Chicago Tribune itself has charged that none of those involved in the Cruz prosecution deserves ever again to enjoy a position of public honor or trust. They have demonstrated that they have no honor and they merit no trust. I pledge to all the citizens of Illinois that I will uphold the law and fight for justice. Thank you very much. Darn good coming to a city club meeting, eh? Uh, on behalf of the city club, I present each of you a membership for one year, win Where, or lose. Where's our mug? Uh, hold on, Miss Madigan. <laughs> and, and, in case fundraising goes a little slow. <laughs> hey, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody.